how much should you have in your 401k savings? I'm going to give you the full breakdown by age from 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s. How much do you think you'll need in retirement so that you have enough to last throughout your lifetime? According to a Yahoo Finance article, Americans on average expect they should have $1.27 million for a comfortable retirement. But the problem is that Americans on average, well, have only saved about $89,300 in their 401k or IRA, or just 7% of their of that target amount. And keep in mind that $1.27 million is the average amount. If you live in a rural area, then $1 million might make sense. But if you live in an urban area, that $1 million might not be enough, even with a paid off mortgage. On my channel, I teach my audience about the financial independence uh, and retire early movement, the Trinity study taught me that the 4% withdrawal rate with a higher allocation in equity will last my investments for at least 30 years or longer. So the 4% withdrawal rate of $1 million is $40,000 a year. Let me know in the comment section down below if you can live on $40,000 a year with your mortgage paid off. If you're on the fire journey, you already have that number figured out. So it really comes down to your expenses before you decide how much you really need to retire or retire early. Let me scroll down here in this article here. Uh, article here. So this is the fancy chart, right? Uh, where it's sorted by age group. According to the Northwestern Mutual Survey, the overall expectation to retire comfortably is $1.27 million, but they've only invested $89,300 towards that goal as of 2023, and which is about 7% of that target amount. And that is nowhere close to where they should be. For people in their 20s, they survey that they expect $1.2 million in their retirement investments, and their current progress is $35,800, or about 3%. For people in their 30s, they survey that they expect $1.44 million in their retirement investments, and their current progress is $67,400, or about 4.7%. And for people in their 40s, they're expecting to retire with $1.28 million, and their current progress is about $77,400, or about 6%. This is interesting because their expectation is lower than those in their 30s, but they've only invested $10,000 more on average than those in their 30s. And for people in their 50s, they have the highest retirement expectation with $1.56 million, and their current progress is $110,900 or 7.1%. And the study showed that people in this age group are going to rely on Social Security retirement benefits when they reach their retirement age. And Gen X in their 50s is the most concerned with more than 55% of people surveyed that they won't be financially ready to retire by age 60. They're also worried about whether Social Security benefits will still be around by the time they retire. If Congress does nothing about Social Security, I think people in this age group would not be ready to retire unless they do something to change their savings right now. And for people in their 60s and 70s, their retirement expectations are between uh, $936,000 and $968,000. Their current progress is between $112,500 and $113,900, or about 11.5%. This is the baby boomer generation getting ready to retire with Social Security retirement pensions. But most of them survey uh, feel like they're not ready to retire because they didn't reach their retirement goals yet even with social security retirement benefits. And, and they're now expecting to retire at the age of 71 because they need more time to invest in their 401ks and IRAs while collecting social security. And I've said this many times on this channel that your savings rate matter more than the stock market returns. How much you need to invest to achieve $1.2 million will depend on your current age and your stock allocation. But there are several reasons why Americans have only made 7% progress in their retirement investments. And reason number one is debt. 
Americans are drowning in debt from student loans, personal loans, credit cards, HELOC, and car loans. The average car payment right now is $716 a month, and the average student loan debt is over $37,000 per borrower. These debt repayments are slowing their retirement investments. And I understand what they're going through because I once had $110,000 in consumer debt. Now, I encourage you to download my free financial resources by visiting firesuchet.com slash resources because I have several spreadsheets that can that you can use to pay down your debt fast. I paid off over $60,000 in debt while making $58,000 a year in income in two years because I lit a fire on my butt and got really intense about it. And if you want to get very serious about your 401k investments, you need to get rid of your non-mortgage debt first. And reason number two is inflation. This is something that we had no control over, maybe except for the government. But here we are dealing with such high inflation after the economic shutdown. And we're dealing with the prices that we shouldn't be experiencing for another three to four years. My wife and I redo our budget every year and you should see our 2021 budget compared to 2022 and 2023. And we're paying way more for groceries, utilities, transportation, and other non-discretionary expenses. But not having any debt definitely, definitely helped, but we still had to adjust our budget to find several things that we could cut costs from. And we do our budget every year in January to adjust for the previous year's inflation. And reason number three is overpaying for your house. And I've talked to many people who overpay for their homes and now they're paying 30, 40, or even 50% of their income towards their mortgage payments and homeowners insurance, HOA, and other housing expenses. The basic rule of thumb is to maintain your housing expenses, including your mortgage payments, under 25% of your gross income. And I would argue that 30% is probably the most you should pay for uh, your housing, but only if you know for a fact that your income will increase by 5% within the next 18 months. I get it. It's tough. The housing market is extremely difficult to get into. The housing prices haven't really come down and the interest rates are at 7%, 7.5% for a 30-year fixed mortgage. It is very difficult. But in any event, People can't save for retirement because they're paying way too much for their mortgage. And reason number four is the lack of strategy and goals to achieve their retirement number. As a financial coach, I've talked to hundreds of clients who didn't have a clear direction on what they needed to do to take advantage of the 401k, Roth IRA, and HSA. Some people left their money in bonds for almost a decade before they realized their portfolios only grew two to 3% annually. And some people cashed out their 401ks or took out a 401k loan to pay, pay off their debts. Building wealth requires financial education. And, that, and that's why I created this channel. And I gotta tell you, the most promising generation, and you'd be surprised when I say this, is actually Gen Z or people in their 20s because they're getting a lot of free financial education on social media and the internet. And I'm not saying that it's hopeless for millennials, Gen X, or baby boomers. I'm not saying that at all. And I just think our education system really fail, failed to teach us about personal finances, budgeting, taxes, and investing. I didn't truly start investing. I'm a, I'm a millennial. I didn't tr truly start investing until I was 31 years old because I spent two years prior to that paying off my debt. And But I'm really glad that I found that book on my display shelf behind me, The Millionaire Next Door, because that book changed my life. And I want to show you how it changed my life because um, that book allowed me to create my own retirement diagram and timeline. First, we had to figure out what investment vehicles we had to grow our retirement investments. Second, we studied the best allocation strategy to build our investments based on our age and our risk tolerance. And to simplify our long-term investment strategy, we have our traditional 401k for my employer contributions, Roth 401k from personal contributions, Roth IRA, and HSA as our investment vehicles. Inside these investment vehicles, we invest in the S&P 500 index fund, the US total market stock, uh, stock market index fund, sector ETFs, and individual stocks. Those investment vehicles are going to be completely separate from the pensions that we're going to collect starting at age 62. And that's assuming 
that social security will still be around. But we're gonna have my military pension starting at age 58 for uh, serving in the reserve with some active duty time and social security retirement benefits, uh, hopefully at age 62, federal pension at age 62, and the state pension at age 55. The ideal situation is that we make $100,000 a year just in retirement pensions starting at age 62 and take some money out of our retirement to travel the world and live in different countries throughout the year and purchase more assets. And I encourage you to create your own diagram like this or schedule a coaching session with me by visiting firesitcher.com slash coaching. That is completely free for you to do. And here's how we prioritize our investments. Our number one priority is to get the employer match with the 401k. This is free money that we will never leave on the table. If my employer gives me a 100% match on my 5% personal contribution, that 5% contribution is the bare minimum I will invest in my 401k. Once we get the employer match, then I move on to the HSA and contribute up to the maximum, which is $7,750 for family coverage or $3,850 for individuals in the year 2023. If you're 55 or older, you can contribute an additional $1,000 to your HSA. I prior prioritize my HSA because it's not just for my medical and dental expenses, but this investment vehicle comes with quadruple tax advantages that allow me to lower my taxes, my taxable income, uh, grow my investments tax-free and make withdrawals from HSA tax-free as long as they're for qualified medical expenses. And the next one is our Roth IRA, which is $6,500 each for me and my wife. So a total of $13,000. We believe that the government tax rates will continue to increase in the future due to the continuous decline of the birth rate. So we're taking advantage of the Roth IRA tax benefits now so that we don't pay any taxes when we're in our 60s. After we max out our Roth IRA and HSA, then we go back to our 401k to maximize the rest of the contribution. The maximum personal contribution limit is $22,500 for the year 2023. We don't just want to have a million dollars in our 401k. We want to have $2 million, $3 million, or $4 million so that we never have to worry about running out of money. It's not greed. It's just insurance for our long-term retirement. And after we have our long-term retirement investments maxed out, then we move on to the taxable investment accounts for our early retirement. And we invest in growth stocks, dividend stocks, and other taxable investments so that we can purchase more real estate and diversify our income in the future. And we invest in our taxable brokerage accounts so that we can purchase brand new vehicles in the future without ever taking out in, uh, any debt. We're also gonna have dividends that will pay for our living expenses during our early retirement. And um that, that will be in our 40s and 50s and i have several videos about the early retirement strategy so be sure to check it check them out on my channel after the live stream and this investment priority i just showed you shouldn't change while you're still actively employed and whether in your uh, you're in your 20s 30s 40s or 50s or 60s as long as you're still actively employed and not ready to retire yet doing the 401k match first Roth second, and then tax deferred always makes sense. And this is not just my fundamentals or philosophy of investing. Almost every financial expert I've ever talked to agrees that we should prioritize the employer match, Roth, and then tax deferred in that order. And once you have your investment vehicle set up, the next step is to figure out how much you can save or uh, for those investment vehicles. Could you max out your contributions to your Roth IRA, HSA, or 401k? Then the next step is to figure out your allocation strategy. How much of your investments do you want in stocks and bonds? And it's important to do some stress tests at least once a year to make sure your investments can handle some financial stress like we saw in 2022. The one, uh, when my stocks went down by 20, 30 or 40% in 2022, I had some blue chip investments that held steady at positive returns. You also don't want to be too heavy in bonds where you, they don't grow as much in your retirement, right? Because making 3% annually won't get you to the retirement number that you want. And I encourage you to download my compound interest calculator and other financial resources for absolutely free 
by visiting firesuchet.com resources. <laughs>